questions. Thank you to the chairman and ranking member for the hearing today. But here we go again. Republicans are so focused on their outrageous culture wars that they're not going to spend uh, our time today talking about the issues that are imperative to the financial sector. Instead, we've convened so that my colleagues can continue to bash what is really a customer-driven initiative. I think that amidst this renewed push, it is worth pointing out that the new products that my colleagues are so quick to deride only exist because there is a market for them. And I thought that the other side was for free markets. Why would we deny wide swaths of investors the information they care about when they are making investment decisions, especially when this information already exists in, in many instances? I'm really tired of spending our time obsessing over manufactured culture wars instead of doing the work that the American people sent us here to do. Our focus could be focused on access to capital for small businesses, for example, bolstering financial literacy efforts to build a more inclusive financial sector, or, as I've suggested previously, addressing the ever skyrocketing cost of housing. During our last spat of anti-ESG hearings, we learned just how detrimental it can be if we blind ourselves to the very real risks associated with a company's mismanagement of their local environment. So I'm baffled to have to say this, but I believe that our nation's investors and other financial services professionals know best how to manage their risk. They are in the business of managing risk in all of its forms, and in any risk that these professionals deem to be material, that should be included within the decision-making process of their purview. I'm a firm believer that a better informed investor is never a bad thing, and it is clear to me that the SEC has the authority to prescribe these highly sought after disclosures. Uh, Mr. Jajorbev, as you may know, the majority of investors have made clear that they want companies to disclose climate related information. We've even seen companies begin to disclose this information voluntarily. So then could you describe why that may be the case? and what benefits companies may receive by allowing investors to consider this information in their investment decisions. So voluntary disclosure serves an important role. Uh, it allows companies to distinguish uh, themselves from their competitors because, as I said uh, a while ago, investment decisions are by their very nature comparative. And so companies are always looking for a way to stand out. The problem uh, with voluntary disclosure, though, and that's why we need mandatory disclosure, is that when there is negative information, when there are problematic uh, facts, when there are risks, companies, because they're looking to attract capital, are reluctant to provide and disclose the negative information. So they end up providing the positive information without providing the negative information. That's why we need mandatory disclosure, a baseline, a total mix of information that actually uh, informs investor decision making. And there is an advantage there, both for companies, as you suggest, as well as for investors and for the economy. So given all the attention uh, given to the scope one, two, and three emissions disclosures, I worry that my colleagues have lost sight of the variety of quantitative and qualitative information regarding climate risks that investors would be given access to. Under the SEC rule, these companies would need to not only provide descriptions of their climate-related risk but critically, they would also need to outline relevant risk management processes. How a company manages their perceived risk is not only crucial for an investor's decision making, but it is simply good corporate governance to have these processes in place. Let's not forget that a key aspect of the SEC rule is the impact of climate-related events, which occurred at an alarming rate last year and can range from hell storms to hurricanes. Finally, let me just close by stating that uh, in Nevada, the very real threat of climate change is causing us to quickly confront the increase in these events, namely for Nevada, a water crisis. We've endured over two decades of a drought in Las Vegas, and it would be difficult to believe that that wouldn't be a significant material risk to a certain company's profitability. Mr. Jajorvi, uh, would you please speak to the importance for a company to be aware of its local water supply challenges and how this information may be helpful for investors when making decisions? 
Yes, so water is a crucial resource. It's a critical resource and it's a scarce resource. And so it is very important for companies to be aware of supply chain challenges. And uh, this is where water scarcity comes in. Thank you very much. I yield back.